Well, good morning, and we're so happy you joined us again today on Lifting You Higher TV Ministries. We just thank God for everybody who watches this show and your encouraging words. We thank God for our partners, our sponsors. We thank God for those of you who are our prayer partners. You're praying for me. And I can feel the difference. Let me tell you something. Prayer makes a difference. There's a difference. When, when people pray, things happen. When people pray, God turns things around. Sometimes things are coming toward you. And you can pray and God will turn it around and send it in the other direction. I'm starting off today with something I hadn't planned to start off with, and that's prayer. Because there is power power in prayer. There's deliverance in prayer. There's healing in prayer. And I want to tell you all who are praying for your children, don't you give up. Prayer can bring your sons and daughters out of jail. It can bring them off the street. It can take them off drugs. It can give your husband a mind to want to be saved and your wife a mind to want to live right. I don't care what you're battling with today in your mind, in your spirit, man. Give it to God. Lay it at his feet. Pray about it. And when you pray, if you don't get a peace, you keep praying. I always say when I get a peace about something, I know my prayer's already been answered. I might not see the end results right then, but the peace lets me know, hey, you can just start thanking me now because it's already done. So many of us are going through things now, people one thing to the other. You know, the enemy is a rowing lion going to and fro, seeing whom he may devour. But he's not going to devour the people of God. And the good news is that we are more than conquerors. We have the victory in Christ Jesus. Now today, I'm going to be showing an excerpt from a message that I preached at the Lake Terrace Convention Center a while back. Sandra Hancock did her part and I did my part. And I did my part on purpose. And I want to say to you today, I don't care who you are. I don't care what color you are, how rich you are, how poor you are. You were born for a purpose. Everybody has purpose. See, God, when he created you, he knew before you were born what you were going to be and what he was going to use you to do. Jeremiah said that while I was still in my mother's womb, God ordained me to become a prophet to the nation. If he ordained him, then there's an ordination he has for you. You need to learn how to walk in purpose. Don't try to do something because somebody else is doing it. Don't try to be something because somebody else is that. Stay in your lane and you will be effective in what God has called you to do. You know, when I think of purpose, I think of your calling. When I think of talent, I think that's what you get paid to do. But when it comes to purpose, that's what you were made to do. You see the difference? Talent, you know, just because you can bake a cake doesn't mean that you're supposed to go open up uh, a sweet shop and sell desserts. That's just a talent. Just because you can, uh, you can sew something doesn't mean that you need to open up a shop and stop, start sewing because we all have gifts. But let me tell you the difference. If God says that you were born to be a writer, I'm using that as an example, you need to start writing. Don't use an excuse to say, I don't have time to write. If you have passion for something, you'll figure out a time that you can do it. You see, I think God called me when I was a child to present, to minister, to preach, whatever you want to call it. And every chance I get, that's what I'm doing. It started when I was a child. If you don't know what your purpose is, go back to the time when you were young. What is it that you enjoy doing? What is it that you got the most um, joy out of when you were doing that thing? I heard Shirley Caesar says that she used to play church all the time and she used to pretend like she was happy in the spirit. And she said one day, the Holy Spirit got over to her and she was out there in the yard with her siblings and she was pretending like she was preaching and, and singing and all of a sudden she couldn't stop. And say her siblings ran in the house and say, Mama, something has happened to Shirley Ann. God had called her. So pay your children some attention. When you see that they like to do certain things, encourage them, push them on. So we talked that day about purpose and people were so blessed. We even talked about the eagle that day. And I don't know if we're going to be able to show that part on today's program. But when an eagle gets to be a certain age, that mom and daddy has a nest for that eagle. But they start pushing that eagle out of that nest. And they push them out. And when they push them out, they go, they go out and they, they fall from under the nest so that the eagle 
will have to be on their own, on its own. If the eagle falls to the ground, guess what they do? They let it get back up and figure out a way to go back because it's time for the eagle to get out of the nest. If God has called you to do something, get out of the nest, go do it. And another thing about the eagle, when he's flying and the current gets bad, the wind is not high and he has a hard time flying, guess what he does? He just glides along until he gets back into that current that's high enough to lift him back up. Maybe you're going through some things today and you feel like you are just gliding along. Stay in the race. Don't quit. Because when you get through this thing, you're going to fly like an eagle. So those are just some points that I want to bring to you about purpose. And another thing about purpose is this. When you are walking in your purpose, if you don't even get paid for it, you will be satisfied. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and quit your job and say, well, I think I've been called to preach, so I'm going to quit my job. No, don't do that. But if God has called you to do something, you do it. I don't care if you're a truck driver, you can still minister to people if you've been called into the ministry. Because there are more people out there that you can reach probably than you can if you open a church and you're just starting. If you've been called to sing and you go to church and somebody asks you to sing, don't be bashful sing. Honey, if I could sing, they would have to sit me down everywhere I go. The only thing I can sing is happy birthday. I do a good job with that, but I know I'm not going to make a CD off of that because that's not my call and I got to stay in my lane. And my lane is to minister the word to you, tell you God loves you and he has purpose for your life. Now we're going to switch to that. We want you to watch it. At the end, we're going to come back and close it out. Stay tuned. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation. When I was getting ready to do this message, God said, When you go over there Saturday, I want you to give them a word out of your belly not out of your head. Because if you give them a head word, the flesh will give it to you. But if I give it to you out of your belly, there will flow rivers of living water. I have a belly word for you today that's coming out of my innermost being. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You know, Jeremiah, as she said earlier, spent 20 years of his ministry on the Josiah. He was a good king who tried to bring the people of Judah back to God. Jeremiah's actual life was in danger because he told people the truth. The political people turned against him. The Christian folk turned against him because all he was doing is preaching the truth. You know, sometimes when you are trying to tell people the truth, they will literally hate you. But you got to tell them whether they want to hear it or whether they don't want to hear it. You got to tell them when, when, they, when they agree with you and when they disagree with you. The Bible said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. If people are lying to you and you live in any kind of life and saying it's okay, that is not the truth. You don't judge people, but you tell people the truth. And that's what Jeremiah was doing. Jeremiah, like Isaiah, was a young man called to God. I did some studying on it, and I found out that he was about 15 years old when he went out to be a prophet. Can you imagine a 15-year-old boy now being a prophet for the United States of America? Hallelujah. But you, you know what? God has some true prophets, and we need more prophets, don't we? We have a prophet in the house today, Pastor Hannah Cowan. Stand up right now, Pastor Ka Hannah. If that woman tells you it's going to rain, you better get you some buckets because the rain is going to come down. We need more prophets. He was called the weeping prophet. He actually cried for his people. Do you ever see people in sin and you feel so bad you just want to cry? But he kept on telling them the truth. But guess what? God protected Jeremiah. See, when you're doing a work for God, you got shield all around you. If you go over here, there's a shield. If you go over there, there's a shield. If you walk through the valley of the 
the shadow of death, there's a shield around you because God is going to take care of that because that's your purpose. In fact, I came to encourage you today to build you up, to let you know that you, are, you didn't just happen. God created you for a purpose and a reason. I want to remind you, if you are still here in the land of the living, your assignment is not over yet. Don't you let people stop you from doing what God called you to do. If God called you to do it, you go if you have to go by yourself. I'm here today to tell you that God gave me two more words, and I'm saying, God, why did you give me those words? And those words are unchartered territory. Unchartered territory. And I looked that up, it means territory that nobody else has gone into. God said he's about to give some of you some unchartered territory. He's about to take you some places you've never been been before. He's going to use you to do some things you've never done before. He's going to speak some words that you've never spoken before because you are about to travel to uncharted territory. You know it's okay if God sent me somewhere and I know where I'm going, but when he tells me like he did Abraham, just get up and travel to a land you don't know, leave your family behind, and trust me, then that is unchartered territory. God is going to do something. Your ministries, pastors, if you are pastors, don't be discouraged because God is about to bless you if you remain faithful. God is looking for some faithful folk. Hallelujah. Abraham was a good example of a person who walked in purpose. In fact, we're going to talk today about purpose. She had hope, and I have purpose. Now, today is not business as usual. It's time out to just start doing the same thing the same way and getting the same results. Sandra has already told you that God is going to do some things in here today. Now, you might say, what is purpose? Let me tell you what purpose is. Purpose is your passion. My little seven-year-old granddaughter, Sarah, told me years ago I was about to preach a purpose message for my TV program, and I said, Sarah, what do you think purpose is? She said, Mimo, your purpose is your passion. And I'm going to add to that, your purpose is your why. It's why you are here. There's a reason for everybody being born. And they are, the saddest thing is when people walk around 25, 30, 40, 60, and 80 years and never know what their purpose was. Never know how to enjoy their family. Never know how to tell God thank you. Never give their lives to God. Never watch the waves roll. Never really enjoy it. But like vagabonds just going around in circles. That's a sad story. But God came to set people free. Now, the three most important days of your life, I want you to remember this. The day you were born, the day you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and the day you find out what your purpose is. Let me say it again. The day you were born, the day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and the day you discovered your purpose. God gave me three more words. And I was in the bed, and, and, and I've been going through some things, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute because I'm going to give my testimony. But he said, if you obey me, Hannah, and you tell the people what I tell you to tell them, he said, I'm going to increase your rest. I'm going to give you restoration. I'm going to give you a deeper discernment. And I'm going to give you a ministry of deliverance. <laughs> restoration, discernment, and deliverance. Some of you might be going through some things right now, but I want you to know you were made to handle it. You can handle it. You see, this, you might want to write this down. Purpose transforms mistakes into miracles and disappointments into testimonies. I 
want to give a quick testimony. The other day, uh, day before yesterday, my son called me and he said, Mom, I'm on my way to Hattiesburg. He said, but I think I'm going to turn around. He lives on the coast. He said, because my chest is hurting. Well, normally I would have gotten upset and said, oh, God, he's about to get a heart attack. But see, when you have a relationship with God, you know how to stay calm because the Holy Spirit will calm you down. Thank God for Diane and Dan Smith's all the way from Jackson, Mississippi, walking in the back. <laughs> so I said, look, he talked and he was telling me his story. I said, let's pray, John. I said, let me pray for you. I began to pray for him, and the Lord told me to tell him, by the time you get to Hattiesburg, your chest won't hurt anymore. He told me he was going to the emergency room when he got up here, and Gary was going to meet him there. And so I prayed with him, and I called him to see if he was at the emergency room. He said, Mom, I'm at work. I'm doing fine. The pain is gone. You see, purpose is just like fuel in your tank. That purpose will keep you going. A lot of times the enemy will tell us, no need are you trying to do that. You can't do it. You don't have the money. You don't have the power. You don't know the right people. You came from the wrong side of the track. But if you have purpose and you have passion to do that, God will give you the power to do it. You see, when you have purpose, you have some power. And power is dominion and authority. God gave us dominion and authority over everything. Things that come against us, they are under our feet. We have the power to step on them and they got to move. You got to open your mouth and you got to speak what the word says, not what the condition looks like, not what the situation looks like, not what people are saying, but you got to say, if God said it, I believe it and it will happen. Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. My name is Sandra Hancock with Sandra Hancock Ministries and I want to take this opportunity to invite you all to one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. Our conferences in Laurel are the second Saturday of each month from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at The Gathering Place, 3227 Audubon Drive. For more information about our ministry, visit our website, sandrahancock.org, or call our 1-800 number, 800-579-7350. Pastor Leela's Keys and First Lady Mary Keys invite you to join them in worship at Church on the Move, 1604 Congress Street in Laurel. Services are Sunday mornings at 11 and Tuesday night prayer and Bible study at 7 p.m. Please call 601-382-5161 for more information or find us on Facebook. We look forward to meeting you and worshiping the Lord together. a lot of people say I'm too old. What I was going to do, I should have done it years ago because I've gotten too old now. Most times when people think they get, when they get 50, they think they're old. Well, I'm past 50, but I don't think I'm old. And I get on my husband all the time. He said, oh, I'm just an old man. I said, well, I'm not an old woman. <laughs> you see, we know that Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. When uh, Caleb got over there and he said, give me my mountain, he was 80 years old. He said, when I was young, 40 years ago, he said, but now I'm 80 years old and they promised me to give me that mountain. He said, give me my mountain. And he went out and fought and he got that mountain. Some of y'all need to know that you need to go take your mountain. The enemy has tried to take your mountain from you. God say, go take your mountain back. 
Stop letting people say, well, you got to sit down over there now because the young people are taking over. Let me tell you something. That's what's wrong with us today. We are letting the young people take over when we can. We have a story to tell of where God brought us from, how he brought us through, how he brought us over, and they need to know that. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You know, God made everything for a purpose. He made the trees. He made the water. He made the clouds. He made the grass. And the grass was created for people to walk on, not to smoke. There's <laughs> something wrong with us when we stop walking on grass and start smoking grass. Something is wrong. When they start smoking, it said, don't smoke it, walk on it. <laughs> Listen at this scripture. It's Genesis 1 and 26 through 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth up on the earth. So God created man in his image, in the image of God created he him, male and female. Now you know as I was reading that, I got a revelation from that. God was talking to the spirit, the spirit was talking to the spirit, and the spirit said, let's make a man, let's not make him like we did the animals, like we did the stars and the clouds, let's make a man in our spirit because we want to have the Holy Spirit on the inside of him, and the only way he can be a spirit man, he gotta be made like me. The spirit talking to the spirit. And in the courtroom of justice, after Eve, after Adam and Eve had sinned in the garden, there was a court going on, and Jesus was the, he was the judge. And he walked up in there and he said, the value of anything is what I'm willing to pay for it. He said, whatever it takes for redemption cost, I'm going to pay the price because I'm going to take them back again. Right. Hallelujah. God brought us back. When the enemy thought he had us, the, the Lord, God brought us back. How he set us free. You see, a lot of times, the enemy will try to bound, bind you and tell you that you are in bondage and show you that you are in bondage. But when the Lord set you free, you are free. Hallelujah, you are free. Free indeed. And you can't look at me and tell what's on the inside of me. You can't look at an acorn and see a tree sometimes. You can't look at one bird and see a flock sometimes. Sometimes you got to stretch your imagination and say, God, I have something bigger on the inside of me and I'm ready to go out and do what you told me to do. Some of you have not been doing it because you are afraid, but God say it's time for you to get up, move out and go do what he told you to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. The enemy's ploy is to destroy your destiny and your purpose. The only thing that God used against the devil was a spoken word. And you know, a lot of times when the enemy is trying to speak to us, if he can get your mind, he has you. Don't let him speak. You got to counteract that thing with the word of God. If he says that, you know what? You will never be able to own a home. God said that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. If he said, you will never get well, by his stripes I am healed. If he says, nobody loves you, Jesus loves me, this I know. And if Jesus loves me, that's enough for me. Jesus had a story. Jesus had a purpose for coming to this earth. Jesus came to save the lost. He came to set the captives free. He came to do the will of the Father. He came to bear witness of the truth. Jesus Christ came that we could have life and that more abundantly. Now, in closing, I challenge you right now, forget about what happened this morning and what's going to happen this afternoon. Forget about what you've been going through and focus on what it is God wants to do for you right now. I want to remind you that Jesus is at the right hand side of the Father and he is making intercession for you. Jesus wants you to make it. He's pulling for you. 24-7 he's pulling for you. There is an anointing to meet every need in the room today. I don't care if it's financial, I don't care if it's salvation, I don't care if it's relationship, I don't care if it's marriage. He said he came to meet every need today.
Maybe you are doing well, but there's still room for more. There is purpose coming forth in your life. Now, I want you to realize today that you were created by God for that purpose, and he's, it's time for you to walk in it. Now, I want you to think about this. There is a praise still on the inside of you that you have not tapped into yet. God said when you tap into that particular praise, he said yokes are going to be broken. He said burdens are going to be lifted. He said minds are going to be changed. But you got to praise him. He said when you praise him, I'm going to open some doors for you that no man can close. When you praise me, I'm going to see that you are able to do the work that I call you to do. So right now, I just want you to give God a sacrifice of praise. I want you to praise him for where he brought you from. Just tell him how much you love him right now. Tell him, where, tell him how thankful you are that he woke you up this morning. Give Father God some praise right now. Praise him for what he's getting ready to do. Praise him for what he's already done. Just tell God thank you. Don't be, don't be stingy with your praise because the more you praise him, the more he's going to bless you. He's going to set you free. God doesn't want you in bondage. I hope you were blessed by today's program. I was blessed by ministering the word at that Purpose and Hope Conference. And we want you to know if you need us to come to your area, Sandra Hancock Ministry, Hannah Hopkins Ministry, we come as a team and we'll come in there and we'll preach the walls down. Just call us and let us know because we feel like this is a time when God has called us to do this for such a time as this because the word is needed. People need to get saved. People need to get healed. People need to get delivered. If you don't know Jesus as your savior today, I want you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me, Lord, and write my name in the Lamb's book of life and I will live for you the rest of my life. I thank you, God, that I'm now saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Until this time next week, I am Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You High, your TV minister saying, you be blessed. So you came, you thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up and you thought I was to die for. Be free, so I can be whole, and I can tell everyone. Facing the death of a loved one can be one of the most challenging moments you'll ever face. The staff at McSwain & Myers Funeral Service are here to help ease that burden. We specialize in giving our families the utmost professional care in their time of need. We provide non-traditional funeral planning, from the pre-arrangements of the funeral to the family repast. We also offer discounts to families of fallen first responders and military. Let our families service your family at McSwain & Myers Funeral Services.